On the line, I have a brother who I'm looking forward to chatting with, hearing his story, talking a little bit about his hood and his history. Ladies and gentlemen from Watts, I have Pistol Loke. What up, Pistol? What's up with it? Nothing much, man. I appreciate you joining the program. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. I appreciate, you know, <clears throat> I appreciate this myself, you know. Cool, cool. Yeah, man. Um, well, let's let's take it all the way back. I want to go all the way back, you know, before, you know, gangbang or anything even started on your end. But uh, tell everybody where you grew up. Okay. Uh, I grew up. I grew up in um, Akron, Ohio. Um, I was born in uh, 1976. And in 87, when I was 11, my mom uh, found out it was the climate was better for uh, uh, children with asthma and, uh, to move to California. So we had family out there. So she, she decided, you know, pack up everything and we moved out there. Okay. Was and it, was it yeah, a and, shock to you, a little culture shock, or did you kind of adapt well? Uh, it was it was a big shock because because it's it's completely different from where I had just came from, you know. It's <laughs> they out here. That's why I try to tell them out here, like it's like a fad out here, you know. Compared to out there, it's it's very very real, and it's like it's like being a part of the basketball team or the football team, you know. You do it because you get tired of. People come through your neighborhood shooting, and you want to be a part of the you know the people who go retaliate. So, and I had some problems also because I'm a, I was a good fighter. I used to box, and I would whoop on guys in the ring. And you know, I, uh, one particular set to like I like I whooped like we jumped him like me and the ref jumped him or something. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So I ended up I ended up you know. Uh, getting some help first. I got some help from uh, some Gray Streets. They helped me. Gray Street was, and uh, and Cuz got locked up. So I ran to some French Streets, and they helped me. And you know, and the rest was history. You know. And when you say they helped you, what do you mean? I mean, um, you know, they were trying. Uh, it, was, it was a Mexican set, and uh, they were trying to you know jump me. They were shooting at me. Okay. Um. Yeah, it, it got it got real ugly, and uh, the shooting at me was—I mean, they could have hit me. They was trying to scare me, oh. you know. But then, then it got more serious because they started, you know, putting hands on me, and you know, I'm getting jumped and going around them. They're like, "What's that? What happened to you?" And you know, and so they they helped me go back and holler at them. You know, mm. you know, I hung out in Jordan Downs uh, projects and. That's just. I, I was talking about that earlier today with uh, one of my Facebook friends because I remember his face. I kept looking at his face like, "Man, did you hang out in Jordan Downs and you know eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety, ninety one? And he's like, "Oh yeah," he's like, That's, "Yeah, I definitely did." And I was like, "Okay, I, I may not remember always remember names. I remember faces though. Mm-hmm. Even though he's older, I st- he still looks like he did. He just looks like he just looked older. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. got gray hair and yeah. Damn. Well, shit. What a time to move to. LA specifically. I mean, we're right in the middle of the crack era. We're right in the middle of gang banging at its height. Anybody who grew up in yeah. the, you know, eighties and nineties, whether you were gang banging or not, if you were just a civilian and you were able to survive that time, you're a warrior. You know, it's it was a different yeah. LA. A different LA than what we know yeah. now. But um yeah, yeah. Take, take me back to, you know, what you kinda remember about, you know, the the, the crack era and just even the, when the gang banger was at its at its height. Oh man, it, it was it was real bad, you know. Like you said, with crack, when crack being on the streets made it made it even worse. You know, it was already bad with the gangs, and the crack just made it a whole lot worse. Because, I mean, it was it was it was survival. You had to survive, you know. I mean, walking to school in the morning and walking home from school was sometimes a task. You know, you. You you run into so called enemies, you know, and and they get at you or you get at them. Yeah, and this it, it got it, got, it, it, it was real bad, you know. I have seen a lot, I have seen a lot, I have seen a lot of people get shot. I have seen a lot, I seen a lot of uh, I seen a lot of LAPD do a lot of ill things that I didn't think was real until I seen it with my own eyes. They were vicious. Yeah. They were vicious toward gang members. Yeah. Very. Yeah, that crash. The, the crash unit was, yeah, they were, they were, they were sick in the head, man. 
seriously, they, like, you know, I was 13 and 14 when the police put their hands on me, like, okay. and didn't arrest me. They, they, yeah, they whooped my ass, took my gun, didn't arrest me. Wow. You know, yeah. And I, you know, we had, we had a couple of, uh, situations where they, they whooped on us and they dropped us off in different neighborhoods where they knew if we probably wouldn't make it back from. Yep. Yep. The famous scene in minister society that, that really happened. Oh, right oh yeah. Yeah. And it didn't happen just once in a while. It happened a lot. You know, I wasn't the only one. We wasn't the only ones that happened to, you know, I, I talked to, I was cool with a lot of gang members, even from other sets. And I would hear the same shit from them, you know, great streets and main streets, uh, East coast. Um, this, stories of how they would, you know, whoop on you and drop you off in, in enemy territory and you had to, you know, make it out of their life. I was fortunate. A couple of times it happened to me, I was fortunate. Mm. Mm. That's terrible. I had people in the area, I had people in the area I knew, and it's funny, I, I was at a family reunion and I met a guy at a family reunion and come to find, find out, you know, he was a pyro. So when they dropped, they beat his ass and dropped us off in Compton, he just happened to be driving down the street that day and seen me. Whoa. Grabbed me and my homie up, put us in the car, and got us up out of there. Damn. She wanna see the city bus. She don't wanna ride the city bus. Because she's new to the town, I advise Look for truth, the ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud, dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash, I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up, I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah most of my life i've been following stars knowing i ain't really had to go that far come to find out it's the truth i already know yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to baby, that's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about baby, just sit your ass Damn. You wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in a jug Give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning, won't remember shit I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, go. go Put your seatbelt on, up and away, we about to go about to The road go. is gon' get windy, promise not to lose control yeah. The final destination's bound to captivate your soul And so, many MCs inspired to be One of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC Then the law came life, now the dreams deferred All the years of writing rhymes captured in a blur My ponders contemplating the worst Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched That's a bitch. Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'ma make it Others believe in you too And it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point Of hurting people That you're close to Yeah 
most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Something else I heard that they used to do also was they would, you know, go to, let's say, a blood set, holler out a crip hood, start shooting, you know, and do vice versa just to kind of get wars going on. I heard a couple of OGs explain that to me in the past. Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah. They uh, they they, they did that. They uh, would go, go through with spray paint, cross out gangs, mm-hmm. and put other gang names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. And they do it because yeah. that's job security for them. I mean, as long as you guys are fighting, they have a job. And there's, there's money in black, right. black uh, you know, crime and, and, and criminal criminality and things like that. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, and they, were, they were just very racist, viciously mm. racist. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, and there were stories. Yeah. I've heard stories also of government agencies dropping off crates of automatic weapons in the hood back in the 80s, you know, leaving trains open with with just a bunch of guns, you know, so people can grab them yeah. and do the thing in the street. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I was out there when that shit was happening. So, yeah, you are absolutely right. That's exactly what happened. Mm. A, a doggone train... Uh, just sitting still, and so they went, you know, investigate, see what's going on, see what, see what's in it, and yeah, it's full of guns and ammo, and yeah, uh, there, there was, there was, uh, there were cops that would tell gang members like, look, if y'all hit the uh, the, uh, the surplus, you know, for the guns, we'll make sure there ain't no cops around, wow. and you know, they, they and yeah, and, and and they would actually hit them spots and get the guns and they were right nobody nobody stopped them nobody stopped them police never came you know mm-hmm. it was all it was all get them weapons on the street so we can keep we can keep our war going that was that basically what they wanted to fuel our war you know what i'm saying they wanted to help us kill us mm. man yeah. yeah what a damn shame man um so how how old were you when you officially joined uh, I was 1988. I was 12. Okay, 12. So, take me back to that day. What What was going through your mind? You know, what actually happened? Did you get jumped in? You know, what What, what happened that day? Uh, okay. Uh, the early part of that day, uh, walking to school, um, I hear, I hear a whistle. I, I mean, I, well, first I hear, oh hell no, I heard. Uh, I can't whistle, but I heard. <laughs> and uh, and I just start seeing people coming from everywhere. I was thinking like, damn, I mean, my age, older, and they said, uh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Akron, Ohio. They said, where? <laughs> I said, Akron, Ohio. They said, where the fuck is that at? I said, it's uh, by Cleveland, Ohio. They said, oh, hell no, man. Hey, y'all, he ain't even from, he ain't even from here, period. He ain't from California. He said, man, come here. He said, man, you know, he talked to me about, you know, what you don't wear around there and why, and, you know, later on, after talking to him and telling him about, you know, my problems I was having and uh, how, you know, my cuz from Gray Street, you know, he got locked up. So, you know, my help was gone. You know, he locked up now. So basically they said, you know, all right, you, you a fighter about yours. You ain't, you ain't, you know, you ain't no punk about it. So, okay, we, we will help you. And they wasn't bullshitting. Mm. They helped me. Mm. They went to help me. And then later on that night, you know, we kicking it, drinking, smoking, you know, and they said, they said, you ready for what we talked about earlier? I said, yeah. Next thing I know, somebody hit me from my left. And then somebody else hit me. And I'm, I just start swinging. I know I hit somebody and I got, as soon as I hit that person, I got hit again. And I got hit so hard, I got knocked into the person who had, who had hit me on my left. And make a long story short, uh, you know, it went on for a while. And afterwards, uh, I, I, <laughs> I got a lightweight pissed, you know, in the heat of it. And, and you know, they, they calming me down like, no, 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 you, you one of us now, you family now, you know. So 
that from that day forward, you know, I was front street wise. And when would you say you were most active? Most active, eighty nine, ninety, and ninety one. Mm. As far as California, and when I came back to Ohio in ninety one, I was still active. It just I wasn't as wild because it's not as wild out here in Akron. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, my wildest years was eighty nine, ninety, and ninety one, especially ninety and ninety one. Yeah. That was that was when it was, I think ninety two in L A was when we had the most homicides, gang related homicides as well, uh, in the history of L A. I think we were up to like twenty five hundred homicides that year, and to give everybody out there a comparison, twenty five hundred back in ninety two. I think last year we had like three hundred and eighty or something like that. So that's a huge jump, dog. I mean, it was really going down in those years. Yes, it was. That's a humongous big difference. And yeah, you're right. The late '80s and early '90s, when you banged, if you if you survived to talk about it like I am now, and the other people you've interviewed, because I've seen your show. Yeah, we are. We all survived some shit. I mean, for real, man. It was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even as a civilian, you you mentioned something earlier that I want to bring up. But even as a civilian, like I was all my life we couldn't wear certain clothes because it was affiliated with, with gangs. If I wanted to wear some British Nikes, I better not buy those motherfuckers because even though I'm a civilian, Ooh. I'm going to get my ass whooped. You remember the BKs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Schools banning Raider jackets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you wore some British Nikes back there. Yeah, you better be <laughs> ready to kill or die, one or the other. For real, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I yeah, get real, mom, real quick. Yeah, my mom heard about that on the news, and she would not buy me British Nike. She's like, no, and I just, I, just, I, I was kind of a, you know, a square or whatever, so I didn't really get it. I was like, no, I want British Nike. She's like, no, motherfucker, they're killing people over these shoes. Yeah, yeah, literally, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, oh yeah, because if they see you and they see you in them, you, you may be a civilian or you might be the enemy. Mm-hmm. So, in their mind, we're not going to take a chance. We'll just get rid of you. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, was, that's, that was the mind state. Yep. You know, hit you up. And, that's, you know, and, I, and I say hit you up. Everybody always didn't hit you up. Some of them just they shoot, they shoot the shit out of you. And then worry about it later. Like, oh, shit, he went in the game and rolled. Well, he should have been wearing them damn shoes. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, man, it was yeah. a different time, homie. Different time. Starter jackets, none of that you could wear. It, it was a crazy, oh, crazy man. situation. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen so many people get them took them up, took it right up off of them. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah, well, shit. Have them walking home cold without uh-huh. that coat on. Yep, in November, just like damn, I shouldn't wear that jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It's just you and me. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go to recess, but I take that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200000 I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. On. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling Absolute, we put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug, they trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy, replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up, and now we two steps beyond these lames, kicking up dust, never running from the smoke. Hold up. We really want the smoke only from Clone God, though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm talking Talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a Gemini, bitch, so you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart.
heart with two scars apart And if I snap, girl, I'm sorry Bitch, pass me the lighter I'm about to play Street Fighter Hot Dugan, that pussy Like my name, Ken Ryu She says she never kissed a girl Well, bitch, tonight you experiment Put this tablet on your tongue And just enjoy the experience One plus one equals two I'm talking you and me You talking me and you When we come together We be feeling absolute We put one in the air And be feeling so cool Ooh, ooh Oh, my mom had bought me a, a, a black and red Pendleton. It collected dust in the closet. I'm yeah, trying to tell you. I... <laughs> no. <laughs> ain't happening. No. Yeah, I know. Grandma would buy us stuff because they don't know what's up. So they would buy us shit at Christmas. And we take it out of the wrapper. And we're like, well, can't wear this. Let me set that aside. Can't wear that. It's this color. You're like, man. I, to this day, dog, I, I literally wear black and gray. That that's the only color I wear is black, black and gray. It's just it's It's embedded in me now 25 years later. Hey, it's, that's how serious it is. That's why I be trying to tell them out here. Like they, they can wear whatever out here, and they don't have nowhere near as many problems as we had out there. Yeah, you, you, you I mean, right, man. You can't be a uh, gray and black. That was you uh -huh. playing it smart. Yep, playing it wise. NWA taught me that, man. <laughs> and, and, man, yeah, you'll learn the hard way. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, you, you could legit be a sports fan. You know, I have cousins who come from Indiana and things like that, or, you know, from other parts of the country. And I'm like, you can't wear that hat. Just leave, leave. I tell them, just leave all sports hats at home. Because no matter what sport, you yeah. can't wear a Houston Astros hat. You can't wear a Florida Marlins hat. You can't wear a, a Atlanta Braves hat. You can't even wear a damn yeah. LA Dodgers hat, man. Because, you know, it's it's like, yeah, it, it, to this day, it's like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, your hat. Your cap meant where you was from, yeah. you know that that was that was uh, that was a way of you letting everybody know where you from. So somebody a civilian trying to wear that, they don't know you're not from there. They got to take it like you are, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and and some of them some of them knew you wasn't from there. They just fuck with your spirit just because you know they 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 like. You ain't supposed to be having that over here. We don't get get up with that, so you're not gonna wear it. <laughs> yeah, now yeah, they, they, yeah, you're right. Nowadays, you know, gangsters kind of blend in. You know, they they're they're wearing the fashion, you know, whatever the hottest fashion is, but they're cripping and blood. But you know, they're wearing skinny jeans. They're wearing you know the latest dope ass tennis shoes. But back then, you knew a gangster when you saw a gangster. He had a certain look. He had a certain swag. He had a certain his clothes were a certain way. Speaking of clothes. Let's let's go back That's to right. 88, 89, 91, whatnot. What was the typical attire for an average crip? Uh, 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 khakis with the, uh, Chuck Taylors, um, you no know, T-shirt, uh, Pendleton. Um, yeah, we definitely wore a lot of, uh, we wore, we, we wore anything blue, man. And, uh, I'll say this, uh, shoestrings, you know, uh, you get your blue shoestrings. That way you make sure you know you're representing. Even, uh, let me see what else. Uh, you know, always Dickies. Dickies was always the shit. Yep. Oversized you know, Dickies. That, Ten size bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was our uniform, you know. And they that had was to be our uniform. creased up, right? They had to be creased up, standing. Yes. If you could stand yeah. them in a the corner, you were a G. They could stand in the corner by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> yes, indeed. With the heavy starch. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Man, what a time, was... dude. Yes, indeed. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Let, let's let's kind of stay in this era. Um, this is the era I was coming up in, you know, but once again, I was a civilian. I was on the outside looking in. And 1988, this movie called Colors comes out. And I wanted to mm. see this movie with everything in me. But once again, my mom's like, nope, ain't happening. She's watching the news stories, hearing about the shit that's going on at the movie theaters and, and things like that. She's like, yeah. no, it ain't happening. I even tried to, like, on the side, ask my stepdad, can you take me real quick? Just we'll, we'll say we're going to the beach or something like that. He was like, no. So I had, long story short, I had to wait for it to come out to VHS, you know, before I got to see it. But when I watched it, I was like, oh, shit, this looks like exactly where I live. And it was a trip seeing that i'm like I've right. never, i never saw anything like that i'm like that literally looks like my block 
you know, because I was living in Long Beach at that time. Um, but how important do you think movies like Colors were to, to spreading gangs across the country? Oh, very much. It, it, uh, it, it made it made the whole world aware of us, you know, because they they had no idea what we were going through out there. And when Colors hit the screen, then they knew, you know. And it's funny you mentioned Colors because living in L.A., I never got to see the damn movie because every time we get in there, something would jump off. We had to hurry up and get out of there. There it is. So I didn't, I didn't actually get to see the full movie until 1990. I came to uh, Akron for the summer, for summer vacation. <laughs> Peaceful ass. Yeah, movie, ain't right? that some shit? I, I, could, I could never, uh, uh, what, twice. We tried to see it twice. After that, I, I, I stopped trying. Because, every, you know, both times, you know, uh, hell broke loose. Damn. And, and a couple other times we didn't even get in the damn theater and, and it jumped off. So yeah, I, I just, I, I just gave up on that. I just waited till, uh, came out here and I, I finally got to see the whole movie. You're not even wet. Wet. What's wet? What do you mean? What's wet? You landed in the river, but your clothes are all dry. Illusion. That's all just an illusion. Like that jukebox playing in the corner. That's an illusion, too. <laughs> Who's really ready to get this shit poppin'? Stay the bond in this motherfucker, we not stopping. Lock in the game ahead of our time, but that was 20 years ago. We still killing the rhyme. It's the reunion, unification of the dope singers. I still throw it up and I'm still making the singers. I'm a grown ass man with a lot to live for. Barefoot, walking on the sand and seashore. Chilling, living my life to find a better way. Overlooking the ocean before retirement day. And I'ma get it because I'm different, not like you. Mamba mentality told me to do what I do. Creativity, I'm a leader. I balance the scales, giving my gift to the world like show and tell. But don't oh well, I'm a package and maybe you will buy it. Just give it one verse when you listen. I'm trying to tell me Other two eyes cloudy because of all night smoking on some clone guy fire yeah. got me higher than the UFO. Breathe through your nose, hope that smoke relax, exhale slow. Down the rabbit hole we go, never searching for the tricks. Freeze come out that night from what they say, and they legit experience. Seize the moment, opportunist. I make love to the pressure, but I go all in and cease to exist. Don't get me pissed, your whole style gets drowned in the abyss. Can't run my wave, I leave you in a rush, do rack list. Swim with the fishes, can't find your body, no reminiscing. Now you're wishing, you never fuck with the birth of never ending. Lesson learned, I'm on your head, lace front perm. Pass through your skin, now you addicted, nigga derm. Never ever cross the line, you will get burned. Just sit back, take notes, and wait till turn. I'm a little bit different. Lights out, I be all in my feels, melting in the mic couch in another time zone in somebody else's house in the twilight zone. And the tambourine man tells me about his whole plan. Clouds turning into sand, oceans turning into land. There's a gun in my hand and a penny in my pocket, and I don't even know if I'ma make it to the rocket. Cause they just counted down in the at three now. So I'm running through the clouds with my luggage and my Bible and a smile on my face. Cause I'm in another place where the turtle wins the race. And he throws it in your face. I don't give two fucks about it. Yeah, you know I'm about it, about it. Shit, subscribe to the newspaper, read all about it. Shit, read the whole book, cause the cover's kinda plain. I'm a little mad. Stuff if you know what I'm, I'm saying. I'm a little bit different. I don't know why I do what I do. I just don't want to be like you. I just don't want to be like you. I'm a little bit different. Cause the sky ain't always blue. And the moon ain't always new. And the sun ain't always cool. I'm a little bit different. Beginning to colonize. My friends will be arriving very shortly. I think they're going to like it here. It's a lovely area. So, so remote, so pleasant, 
So off the beaten track, just the perfect spot for a colony, don't you think, Mr. Haley? Speaking of Akron, what is the, the gangbanging scene like out there? Uh, you, you got a little bit of everybody here. You got Crips here, you got Bloods here, you got Pyrus here, you got uh, uh, some of the uh, Chicago gangs, GDs and Vice Lords here. It's a, it's a, it's a big mixing pot here. And they got a lot of, like they mix shit up a little bit here. They got everything confused. I, you know, I came, when I came out here, I started setting them straight. Like, you know, um, they were mixing Crips and folks and mixing Vice Lords and Bloods. And, and I had to let them all know, like, no, nah, you know, it, it, we're all completely different. You know, they, they had a, you know, misconception out here. Mm, and yeah, so okay. it's, it, it it was it's I've I've ran into a lot of uh, gang members here though that are from L.A. and you know they just they got family out here so you know um, most of them like me they wanted to get get them away from the gang so they move them out here and then out here you know we don't stop you know like we said don't stop to the cash and drop so the only the only difference is out here it was nowhere near as bad. Damn. Yeah. So you were there in '91, pretty much schooling people on what it was like coming from the land and and the real, because yeah, there there was you know back in the day, right. from what I understand, is it the folks aligned with the Crips? I'm, I hope I'm not messing that up. Um, some Did it again? Uh, was it the folks that were aligned with the Crips and and the, you, you said the or explain that again? Right. How, they, how, yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. They were mixing it. They were mixing uh, folk with Crip and mixing vice laws with bloods and I had to let them know like, okay, that's fine what y'all doing here, but you go to LA with that and y- 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 y'all gonna have some problems. Cause that's not, no, <laughs> you know, keep that separate. If, if y'all want to be cool with each other, that's, that's cool. I don't got nothing wrong with that, but don't mix that shit up. You know, they were, yeah, it, it was, it was wild. And it wasn't until years later, other people from LA came out here and they heard the same thing from them. Then they're like, Oh, you was right. Yeah, I was right. I was trying to tell you off from, the, from 1991 when I first came out here. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very different here. Uh. And yeah. And like I said, I did run into, I've, I've ran into quite a few, uh, real crypts here, real bloods here, you know, real pyros. And who are some of the gangs that we would recognize out here in LA that are, in Akron. That's in Akron. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of, uh, long beach twenties Crips, uh, rolling 60 Crips. You got some Hoover's here. Um, there's a couple of cats here from East coast. Uh, I met a guy from kitchen Crip. Let me see. Who else? Uh, Oh, playboy gangster. Um, there's a few of them here, real ones from out west. Uh, west Side Mafia Crip, uh, that's Pomona. There's 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 one there's a guy here from there. Um, my cousin, uh, Trey Five Seven, that's Pomona, same town. Um, let me see who else. Uh, I think I named everybody. Okay. What about the Mexican gang? Yeah, and then, uh, well, uh, none of that out here. Definitely none. Okay. It's, it's some bloods out here and some oh. pyrus out here. Oh, okay. Um, there was uh, some treetop pyrus that was here. I'm not sure if they're still here or not. I met a dude from the east side of Compton. He was a pyru. I can't remember what city he was from. Um, let me see. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, I mean, it's pretty much popping out there from what it sounds like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a few real ones here. And then there's some there's some wannabes here, too. Mm. And a lot of those wannabes are the ones that, like I said, they was trying to mix it. And I'm like, nah, you, you can't do that. You go back out in L.A. talking that, and they, yeah, you'll get hurt. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, what, what do you think the number one reason is that kids join gangs um 
the number one reason me I, I'll say it like this when you, the reason I would think the number one reason is because living out there and like I said you keep having them coming through your neighborhood shooting you know you want to be a part of the people who go do something about that and and gang members are looked up to because they're the stand up guys you know, those are the guys that ain't going to sit down. They standing up for the neighborhood. They standing up for their turf. They standing up for their set, you know, and that's admired, you know, and, and me, especially coming from my family background, my dad was a fighter. All his my uncles were fighters, all his brothers. So they, they reminded me of my dad and my uncles, you know, some of the stories I heard about them. That's, you know, that's what these cats was doing. You know, because they wasn't always shooting. You know, I, I, I've seen some good fights where, you know, <laughs> where he went with the hands, even even in the late 80s. You know, yeah. and, and that the number one reason is because you want to belong to something, somebody that's standing up for themselves. You know, because that's rare. Okay. Especially back then. Especially back then. That was that was very rare. And so like I said, you know, they were looked up to. So that's what you know, some children wanted to be like Michael Jordan, some wanted to be like Magic Johnson. I wanted to be like Big T Bone. Mm. You know? That's who I wanted to be like. I heard stories about him and some of the other big homies. I wanted to be like them. I didn't want to be like Michael Jordan. You know, I didn't want to be like uh, uh, Magic Johnson, you know. I wanted to be like them because that was TV. These was real life in my face, reality. So yeah. it was a big difference. Cool. I think to this day, that, that's, that's, what, that's why the reason, probably to this day, you know, you look up to that power, to that stand-up guy. Mm. They don't take no shit, you know. As the time goes by and the earth rotates, we gon' fly high up to outer space. And we would never fall down. I'm one with the universe, call me the sound. The bass booming in your speaker with the microphone, I possess it's a heater. You better drop it, let go. You can't touch my beats or my flow. Nigga, Kevin Smith, my name, but not the director, we ain't the same, man. I'm a pimp by nature, inside of me is a god, the creator. Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean. I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean. But working every day from nine to five in my thing. I feel like a trap. Can't get out of the bubble. I'm running out of time. Overload, I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm trapped. Can't get out of the bubble. I'm running out of time. Overload, I'm in trouble. Trouble, trouble. One by one, we start to subtract them. Separate facade from who really bought that action. Feel like I'm trapped in the room without a key. Full wall surrounding me, stripping my identity. Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive. Take away my culture and my nationality. Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. double standard to killing my folks. Like it don't even matter. And when we gather, disgusted by the charades. Bullets spray the crowd, target practice in the game. No accountability, so who bears the blame? They want to see us violent and justify the change. Back to how it used to be. Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel this heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For I awareness I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble 
and let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this and hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified and made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it have a purpose When he smiles they don't really know what's under the surface I'm a product of pain, racism, and cocaine I never tooted once but it's all in my veins That shit is all in my genes, see? It's my destiny This is nothing new kid, I'm just an old recipe A boring story that you've heard hundreds of times Blah blah blah, wham wham wham, hate my life and my parents both sucked, I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, I done that they I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble, trouble Who were some of some of your OGs who you looked up to back then? Oh, uh, like uh, like I just mentioned, um, you know, Big T Bone. Oh man, Sleepy, Pookie. Uh, it was so many of us. Uh, Burdock. Um, oh man, Snoop. Um, oh man, it was so many. And I'm, uh, you gotta excuse me. I, I'm getting old. Oh, I'm my memory with you, my dude. messed up. <laughs> Set born in '78, homie. I heard you say '76 earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Hey, oh, you say you was born in '78? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'm right there with you, man. If you could put a number on it, how many friends and family would you say you've lost to the gang life? Whether it be by death, by jail, prison, or whatever, you know, by drugs. If you could put a number on it. Uh, how many that I knew? That you've lost, yeah, personally. Oh, man. Whew. Uh, man, the pen to prison, all I got to say, I don't have enough fingers. Mm. And death, once again, I don't have enough fingers. And that's not just Front Street. You know, other gang members from, from other sets, that I was cool with, you know, that I shot hoops with, or or they came and watched my fight, you know. Yeah, mm. too many. Mm. I've been to, I've been to funerals where the funeral got disrespected by the, the rivals, you know. Mm. Like shot so up. That's why. That's why. I, you shot up. Uh, I've been to funerals where uh, I I guess they, what they would probably call suicide mission come in. And all that, you know, it, yeah, it was, it, it was bad. It, it was fucked up, man. It wasn't good at all. Damn. Um, yeah. How, how did you survive? I, the only way, uh, only thing I can say is it, it, it just wasn't my time, you know, because it, it's been plenty of times I've been shot at, and uh, and I've never, you know, got hit with a bullet where I had to go to the hospital or anything. You know, I've been jumped multiple times. Uh, I just, it just, it just wasn't my time. It seriously wasn't my time. I mean, even out there and out here, because, you know, I, I, I almost died out here too. You know, uh, when I was 18 and 94, I got jumped real bad by a, some guys over on the east side, which is uh, where are the, most of the bloods in Akron are at. And, you know, I got jumped really bad. Like, I had my head stomped to the point where they had to take pieces of my skull off my brain, stop the internal bleeding, and, and stitch and staple my head back together. I was supposed to have multiple seizures. I didn't have none. And when I told the doctor that during one of my visits, he looked at me like I was crazy. And looked at my mom like she was crazy. And she shook her head like, yeah, he has none. He, he even called, he called me a walking miracle. Jesus Christ. Man. He was from, uh, he was from India somewhere. Mm. I, I, I shook that man's hand and hugged him about four or five times. Wow. <laughs> wow saved your life, huh? Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy to, to leave from L.A. from all that and survive all that and then come here and almost die. And it happened like that in Akron. 
Damn. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's like a soldier going to war in Afghanistan and then, you know, coming back home and surviving that, but then coming back home and somebody shoots him in a liquor store robbery. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, mm. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, it was it was a wake up call for me. That's when I slowly started trying to change my thinking. And by ninety six I really, really started changing my thinking. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a hypothetical question for my last question for you. If you could talk to an eleven year old you who is right there putting his tippy toe in the gang life and, and, and about to jump fully in, you know, hypothetically what would you tell him? Uh, that's funny you ask that because I I, uh, I do a lot of mentoring to uh, young gang members and like I, and I don't care if they're Crips or Bloods or Pyrus. Um, I would tell them like I told them uh, Bloods over there on the North Side about uh, I want to say about 15 years ago. Uh, I know what y'all are doing, but this ain't what's up because ain't no future in this, you know. The, the, the future of this is either death or a jail cell. And you go have a lot of friends. You go lose a lot of friends and it's going to make you more bitter. And it just ain't worth it. Stay your butt in school, you know, and, and stay away from this. And if you just, and you just going to just jump into it, you don't want to listen to me and all that. All right. Then, then at least do this. Be careful and don't start nothing with nobody. If they start it, then I understand. You got to defend yourself. Other than that, nah. Yeah. Don't 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 indulge in this because this isn't isn't there's nothing but bad involving this. And I mean, don't get me completely wrong. I, I I will tell them like you know it is love in this because I'm 44 and I'm still front street wise. You know what I'm saying for the love and the loyalty. Yeah. You can have love and loyalty without killing somebody who looked like you because he ain't from your set. He ain't got to be from your set. As long as he ain't did nothing wrong to you personally or nobody you love personally, then leave it alone. And even if somebody, you lost somebody because of that, getting them back ankle, get, bring them back, and it's about to cause you more problems and you might not be here. That would be my message. Mm. That's the same message I had to them young bloods over there on the uh, on the on the north side, and some young crips uh, over on the west side. Same message, uh, and I damn near said it almost identical in both situations. Yeah. Mm. Well, Pistol, I, I appreciate you sharing your story, and also appreciate the work that you do with these young kids because Lord knows they need it. They're so misguided and. It's very important that people like you are out there. So I wish you the best of luck in that. Uh, is there anything that you want to promote, you know, give a shout out to? The floor is yours, my man. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. All I want to say is uh, to any young person that's listening to this, if you're hearing this, take heed to what I'm saying. I lived this. I, and I've been around a lot of people who lived this. And all of our stories ain't happy. You know, we, yeah, we had our good times, yet we had a lot of hard times, too. And I'm only here because I'm supposed to be here to, probably to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's what you I know. believe. Yeah, that's exactly what I believe right there. That you're, you're, here, you're here for a reason, man. You're, you're going to change some lives, and, and I really hope that you do with this interview as well. And once again, I appreciate you, man, and I, I, I wish you the best, and I'll be uh, definitely stay in touch with you. Hey, man, I appreciate you. You have a blessed night, dog. Hey, you do the same. All right, man, peace. Peace. Oh, good dude, man. Damn, that story about him in Akron getting his head stomped into the ground. Just, I just envisioned that shit, and... Shout out to that doctor that saved his life, man, because dude is out there doing something good, and hopefully he's changing lives. No, I know he's changing lives, not hopefully. Um, we need more people like him out there, because like I said, a lot of these youngsters, not just youngsters and gangs, but youngsters, period, they're lost, dude. 
they're lost and we need people like him to bring them back to the light so yeah that's all the mushiness i'm gonna get into i appreciate you guys joining the program thank you for hitting that like button i really thank you for hitting that subscribe button if you like my content you know please do tell a friend that's all i ask is to hit that like button that's all i ask i don't ask you for donations i don't ask you to buy my products and stuff like that like a lot of other podcasters do look just hit that like button so other people can get notified that's literally all i ask i wish you all the best out there i'll talk to you soon peace I know a girl that pops a perk before she brushes teeth. I know a dude that snorts coke at least twice a week. I have a friend who's married, but he still be fucking bitches. And his excuse is that his wife is always fucking bitching. I remember, hold up, sorry, I forgot to mention. I know a girl that used to cut herself to get attention. To get attention, I would always used to get detention. Getting suspended was my only life's mission. My little cousin went to jail, now he's facing life. Promised my aunt I'll look after him, but I lied. Working 60 hours a week trying to stack cheese. Ignoring texts from my family members every week. I'm a deadbeat cousin missing birthdays Promised my dad that I'd call him on Thursday But it's Saturday and I haven't hit him yet I know one day that is something that I will Slow down get. Take your time and focus Sip your potion Oh, slow motion Slow down Take your time and focus Sip your potion Oh, slow motion Yo, yo Yo. I write rhymes for the masses, introductory classes, bringing you up to speed, can't see, go get your glasses, we gon' mix it with the little Honey Jack, got the cherries at the bottom, you know I be getting that, so much going on in the world today, I think we need to slow down, chill, meditate, let me fly in the sky like birds, I'm using my imagination to script it with the words, so let's blow clouds, I'm sending you much love, I'm held down by gravity, my spirit is up above, hop in the sky, take a ride with me, 485 horsepower, Hear me? Now we gone in the wind, dipping off in the sunset Moving at the speed of light, car looking like a jet I bet it was another who wanted to shine But I'm two steps beyond, baby, this my time Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh, slow motion Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh, slow motion Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Now it's just them chemtrails trying to take us out, man Population control, so the devil your soul For the money and the power, yeah, the ultimate goal Let that sink in, smoking on some clone guy I feel like I'm sinking in a pool full of liquor Incoherent, sober up, then I do it again Determination of a tortoise with the speed of a hare I'm blowing past some seas like I blow my smoke in the air I play this game to win this if I was on double dare And I'm always welcome back like my name was Mr. Carter Rubber, like I burn my leaf Hard for me to slow down when my kids gotta eat I'm in the belly of the beast, maneuver like Jet Li Translation, man, I'm quick on my feet Quick to defeat, that's my suspicio Or get hit with this heat What? What did he say? Can you repeat? That's my suspicio Or get hit with this heat Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh, slow motion Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh slow motion